you know, it just occurred to me, I don't think at any point in this playthrough I've actually mentioned SMTX Fire Emblem. I'm going to continue not mentioning it. Speaking of which, welcome to Helena. So, I'd probably say this is the most difficult of all the Gaiden chapters. It's still very, very easy, but it's conceivably difficult. It's got some parts that could be hard, if not for the fact that all the enemies are kind of pushovers. Right, so, quick look at the map. The enemy layout doesn't really look too difficult, does it? So we've got a whole lot of horseback units. Those are doors that you'll want to unlock. Now, they might very well lead to treasure, of course. Some knights, they won't be a problem. Well, then again, Samson's more my axe user this time, so maybe they will be a little problematic. And yeah, other than that monoquette at the end of a choke point, and maybe that sniper as well, none of this really looks too bad. We do have a bunch of promoted units, but nonetheless, yeah, the, the goal point's right there. Nothing too challenging, it seems. You know, I've always found it really weird how some of the characters are kind of looking like head-on towards the camera except to the side, while others are kind of turned. It's a really weird perspective, and I don't think the artist really considered the way all of them kind of face each other. Because basically, at the moment, these two men are just standing side by side glaring at each other, and then this guy comes in and he's actually turned towards Dactyl. Oh yeah, and I guess an important conversation is going on. How much can I hunt this for? Oh no! The nerd is going to attack me! Oh, whatever will I do? Just put them somewhere on the map, I don't know where. I mean, we have cells, but we're kinda using those for treasures, and I think the treasure's more important, so just don't put them in there. Alright, well, uh, like last time, I think I'm just gonna put his profile up now, because we're not gonna be getting Etzel until the very end of the chapter, so I'm not putting that up right at the end. So, uh, future me, could you, uh, do your thing? So, our character for this chapter is Etzel. He's... okay. His starting stats are decent, his growth rates aren't that good, and the absolute worst part of him is his lack of defense. He starts with 7 defense, which is... okay for a mage, not great, but he out and out can't get any more defense, so he's gonna be pretty frail overall. Make sure he doesn't go up against any units that can hit him back, otherwise, he could die. Well, I assume he's done by this point, so let's just keep on setting up our units. Really nothing to worry about just yet. Um, I guess the part I'm actually not really worried about, but the most important point isn't going to be for a while still, so... I guess I could go over Etzel himself a little bit. So, in the original game, there wasn't actually any sort of usable Dark Mage or Shaman or whatever have you. I mean, there's Garnuf. He is a different class that can be described as some sort of Dark Mage like in the later games. But, Etzel was added in and now he's kind of the Shaman of the game, except... There's no real dedicated Dark Magic other than, like, I'm Hulu. So, he's kind of just a no another normal mage, which is why I don't really like getting rid of Linde, because she's a good mage, and, you know, Etzel's okay, but I'm not a huge fan of him. It would be nice if he got more Dark Tomes, but they added a, a shaman character without actually adding any sort of benefit to that, so he's kind of just... meh. Now, that being said, Etzel kind of seems like he's at least a little bit of a reference to uh, Fire Emblem 7, Blazing Sword. 
because first off, he himself kinda looks like Canis. I mean, he's got the monocle thing going on, they have different hair colors, and quite frankly, Canis is way cooler than Etzel will, have, will probably ever be. I mean, I guess maybe if I were to remake this game already, come on, get on it, Nintendo. Uh, you know, may maybe, maybe they could write him so it'd actually be interesting, but yeah, he's kinda just there, and Canis is the best, so... Visually, they kinda look similar. Other than that, mm, yeah, that, that's where it ends. Uh, coincidentally, though, uh, his wife, who passed away and all he has left of is a ring, uh, her name is Ursula, and Ursula is a major villain in Fire Emblem 7, who it's kind of optional to kill. In order to actually fight her, you have to go through one of the worst chapters in the game, and by the way, on my non-com channel, I'm actually nearing that point of Fire Emblem 7, so if you want to check that out, you know you can. You can watch me suffer through the horrible Water Temple, which, you know, I'm not, I'm not quite there yet, still a few chapters to go, but yeah, Water Temple is the worst. Anyway, though, uh, yeah, that that's just a name thing, though, and it's kind of co of a coincidence, so... There's not too much to it other than, oh hey, that's kind of neat, they have a character that kind of looks like a character from Fire Emblem 7, except he is nowhere near as cool, and his wife is a character who has the same name as a Fire Emblem 7 villain, except, you know, Ursula basically doesn't exist outside of just being a name for Etzel, and... And yeah, that's just about all I had to say about them. Now it's just, let's go to cells. You know, in fairness, it probably would have been a much better idea to send most of my army the other side. I mean, eventually there will be reinforcements, and uh, like I said in the... Was it the last Gaiden chapter, or was it just like miscellaneous talk? I mentioned how I did pretty much all of these blind, and this one's no exception. I don't believe I had any sort of death or anything like that. So this was all just the uh, first shot, which explains... Oh no, there's a Monocad. Okay, let's take care of him. Ooh, well, that actually doesn't do much damage. Norn is pretty powerful, but apparently uh, that Monocad is just a lot better. Alright, well, let's take care of him, though. Thank you, Steel Sword, and thank you, Harden, for using that Steel Sword. You're kind of the more important part of that equation. Um, but yeah, I mentioned before I did all these blinds, so I didn't really know what to expect. I kind of just assumed that there would be reinforcements on this side, and I believe I was correct, though I don't think I had the timing quite right. Alright, well, there's one chest to get there, a mage in the way, he shouldn't be a problem. Seda, make sure he's not a problem. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Right, that takes care of that. Now, because I got the timing wrong, yeah, this chapter could have gone way faster, and I almost wish I re-recorded this. Almost. I do know, however, that past me would have been very annoyed by doing it, so... Present me is just gonna have to put up with it, I guess. Oh well, it's slightly inefficient, but that's what happens when you're not experienced with something. Meanwhile, the rest of the game I just kind of swept without much of a problem at all. So yeah, as I said before, the main issue of this chapter lies within this choke point on this side, because it is a very long, thin hallway that only one unit can fit down at a time. Well, you know, just going vertically, really. You can have a bunch more units behind them, but that's definitely not going to go too well because then you'll just have all your units bunched up, and of course, the main threat there is the Monoket, followed by the Sniper. You probably don't want to get in range of both, because they are both very powerful units. Of course, you also have to take care of the things in the sides of the choke point at first. Uh, those guys, though, aren't nearly as threatening, because it's just a couple of archers and a couple of mages. Of course, you don't want to send a Pegasus Knight through, because they will probably be destroyed by the archers. Uh, definitely don't give them a Javelin, because if they can fight back, they might be able to take one hit, but then if Seda were to kill the uh, archer, then the other one would just come in and kill her instead, because I highly doubt she could take two hits from a sniper or a distant archer. 
Bow user in general, that's what I'm trying to say. Thankfully though, this guy is actually really well placed, and by really well I mean really poorly for him, but fantastic for me. Because now he's dead and that was actually a very good level up. Good job, Linde. And that's why I keep you around, it's because you're really good and you killed things with magic a whole lot. Unlike Merrick, who admittedly would probably be good if I actually used him, but because I don't use him, when's the last time you saw him kill a thing with magic? Never? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you've never seen it, have ya? Alright, well, solution time. Have Linde do everything, because to be honest, not much of a better strategy than that. She will kind of just take care of everything, and you don't need to worry about all that much, because she's a very, very good mage. Not, she's not, oh, uh, I was about to say she doesn't have the best dodge, but nobody actually attacked her. That's highly inconvenient, actually. I don't want to go into that choke point. I also want to make sure I'm a good distance away from these guys. I successfully did that. And I suppose we might as well just take break to just destroy these cavaliers. It's very unnecessary because, come on, a couple paladins, actually all three of them are paladins, but they're probably not that good as paladins. Oh, they do have a javelin though, I'll give them that. Not bad equipment, I must say. Oh, board's low speed is actually starting to be a bit of a problem. Though then again, Cavaliers are kind of, or uh, Paladins rather, are very naturally fast, so, you know, it, it kind of stands to reason that they wouldn't really get doubled so often unless you have a really fast unit like Seda. And a longbow, as I said before, at least I think I've said it before, they can attack from three spaces away. I could be wrong about that. I forget. I mean, in fairness, I'm also playing a bunch of other Fire Emblem games at the moment, so maybe I'm just accidentally acknowledging something I thought there and thinking, oh, well, obviously I mentioned that in my playthrough here of Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon, obviously, but... No, nah, probably would be. Oh, right, 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 yeah, I was back in the previous chapter. I have already forgotten about that, apparently. So, yeah, if you're on the Gaiden path, you don't need to waste your money on a long bow in the secret shop in Altia Castle, because you can just go here for it. Of course, chances are you probably haven't uh, uh, gone to the Gaiden chapters, because, as I've mentioned before, they suck a whole lot. Alright, so a Worm Slayer might not be a bad idea for that passage. By which I mean, you should probably use it, unless you don't want to kill the Monoket, which makes sense. You know, you might want to send another unit in after drawing them out. I can totally understand that. And yeah, that just about takes care of those mages. Very good, very good. Uh, it's a good thing they didn't actually, like, switch it up, you know, like, a uh, mage and an archer on that side. No, it's mages to one side, archers on the other. Because that would really really ruin my plans. I mean, come on, it's kind of ingenious. Oh, hey, look, you lure the Pegasus Knight over, because they're not really going to take much damage from magic, but oh, wait, no, there was an archer, so now they're dead. Good job, idiots. I don't know what those paladins are even planning. Why are they hugging the wall? There is no point to doing that. Alright, well, I suppose I just went with Plan Frey, because Frey is great. I mean, it should be obvious since he's a paladin. I mean, at this point, uh, basically all of my units are on the verge of promoting. Because the experience hasn't really gone to many other characters. I have stuck to only the characters I need for this playthrough. All others either die or just don't get recruited. <laughs> and Plan Frey was a complete success. That was incredibly easy. And I didn't even get hit by baloney, which I would have survived anyway. Man, I was kind of hyping up this uh, this uh, choke point right here. And for what? Nothing. Because it was actually incredibly easy. I mean, it really shouldn't be a surprise, because everything in the Gaiden chapters is easy. As I've said before, and it really makes the rest of the game easier, because I'm getting some pretty easy EXP at the moment. I mean, yeah, sure, these enemies might be easy stat-wise, but do remember there are also a lot of promoted units as well. 
And since there are a lot of promoted units, that means that I'm also getting a lot more experience than I would normally. And, wow, speaking of experience, I didn't get a lot from that, did I? Oh, well, maybe Norn should get a, uh... Oh, shoot, what's the uh, power-up item? Um, strength drops? Soma drops? I've forgotten, actually. Well, whatever it is, those should go to her. Alright, well, um, yeah. Whoever happens to catch, uh, those guys at the choke point kind of have to face a whole lot of paladins alone, so definitely not Julian. I don't think I'd go with Athena, but to be honest, I'm pretty sure Athena could take it, but then again, that's because she's promoted and Bored is not promoted, and quite frankly, I should probably promote Bored. Because, well, my only other axe fighter is Samson, and while well, I did call him my primary axe fighter, he really shouldn't be, because Bored is just a whole lot better. I mean, he won't be able to use swords, but eh, I don't think it matters that much. Bored will do just fine with axes. He is very accurate and will just decimate anything in his way. And look at that! He is level 20. And, uh... Well, whatever. It'll work. I'll make it work. You can make anything work, dammit. So, Bored, I believe, was already promoted in the last chapter in my normal run, so... No need to really pay much attention to it this time. He's promoting, but whatever. Been there, done that. Yeah, it kind of sucks that my important units for the Gaiden chapters didn't promote on screen. Because, you know, you're not going to see Athena promote in the standard game because she's just not there. But you missed it completely here because I was using her, her a whole lot and Athena's pretty great. So, that's why. <laughs> That's why she is just rolling in the experience. Like Frey. Frey is also rolling in the experience. Pretty good promotion. But, I mean, you only ever really promote in one way, so... there's It's kind of redundant to say that when everyone promotes the same way, but, you know, I, I should compliment on him on it anyway. Oh, and what do you know? Yet another promotion. Maybe Norn will actually have some good strength now. Wouldn't that be nice? Oh, uh, by the way, I forgot to mention it earlier, but uh, Etzel isn't really going to be much of a threat. He's kind of like Horus in that he's not going to attack us, except it's even harder to get Etzel to attack you, because it, at the very least you had to attack Horus' units for him to attack you back, you will only attack Etzel if you yourself initiate the fight. He won't go after you. He's just gonna stand there and whistle and, you know, hope that you kill Dactyl so that he can get his ring back. Yeah, see, even the game doesn't acknowledge him really moving all that much, but I think you can stand in his range and you he won't attack you. He won't move around for sure, but I think I once placed myself in his range and he didn't attack me. I could be wrong about that, though. I mean, if you're really worried, he's very easy to avoid anyway. But nonetheless, nice level up, Norn. And do take note that she's also a sniper. And she also started as an archer, of course. Whereas Caster in the main game is a hunter, so he might very well have a different promotion by which I mean he definitely does, and I'm not being very subtle. And man, it's a really good thing I didn't actually wait for those guys, because come on, they're, they're coming in so slowly for paladins. It's like they're not even trying or something. I mean, come on, guys, you can do better than this. We're already moving on with our lives. We've been there, we've done that. You know, now we're taking care of the guys over here. It's really not an issue. Also, it's kind of nice that Norn is finally at least decent at moving around. I don't know why, but archers just have the absolute worst movements. That's why I use Caster, because his movement feels a lot better. I don't feel nearly as hampered as I do with archers, because I think he has another point of uh, movement over other archers. 
I think, actually, archers have as much movement as knights? I could be wrong about that, because I haven't looked at it in a while, but I remember thinking that that was the case, and that was really dumb. Because, come on, knights are supposed to be the slowest units, and yet you make archers, the guys who are supposed to be able to maneuver around into certain positions, you're going to make them the slowest? Really? It's just not a very good idea. Alright, well... You know, that guy would have been a threat if this area wasn't locked at first. Because, you know, that, that actually would have been a pretty good little map choice. Like, either don't have this locked so that he's covered, because if that's the case, then he can't attack you, so he's entirely redundant, whereas he would have been very useful for that choke point. I mean, come on. Just imagine being attacked by mages and archers and a monoket, and on top of that, you got some guy throwing Swarm at you. It's not the most accurate spell, sure, but it's kind of terrifying when you're at low health, because you just get this feeling like, oh, yeah, at any point, Fire Emblem could very well screw me over on the RNG. And like that, 35% I'd normally scoff at, but it hit me and it just barely had enough attack power to actually kill me. Well, guess I'm restarting the chapter now. So yeah, how many times can I say the Gaiden chapters are very easy? Because the Gaiden chapters are very, very easy. You know what would have been even better, though? If there was a thief in this chapter, and he just kind of opened the door, and then the guy with the swarm attacked you, that would have been great. It would have just been the best surprise, like, oh, doop de doop de doo I'm going through this chapter. Oh, Thief's there. Oh, I bet he's going to try stealing that treasure, that rascally thief. Oh, no, it's a mage. <laughs> Suddenly, the enemy's range is very, very good. That is not a good thing at all for me. All right, well, Sniper... Yeah, Norn may not be the most powerful, but, uh, Silverbow. <laughs> She is, of course, sturdy enough to be able to wield that silver bow without any sort of huge restrictions. She's got the speed for it. She's ready for it. She can pick that thing up despite being made of pure silver, which... Okay, it's probably not pure silver, otherwise it'd be kind of heavy and not very good as a, uh, as a bow. And that's a Wodao, or wo Wodao? I'm probably mispronouncing that horribly, but basically it's kind of like the, uh, Killing Edge, except with slightly better stats. Uh, I do generally use that on, on at least one of my Myrmidons. Uh, of course, in this file, it's going to be going to Athena, because, I mean, who else is it going to go to? Well, it's not like it's Myrmidon-specific, as far as I know. I'm pretty sure I've had somebody else wield it, like Ogma or... <sighs> Samson, we're going to need to talk later. Well, I know for certain he's not going to be wielding the Wodao, or Wo Wodao. I don't know how to pronounce that, I'm sorry. It's my fault, I'm screwing up the pronunciation. But, yeah. <laughs> I just don't know how to pronounce it. Okay, thank you. You hit him once. Good job. You did it, Samson. Have a gold star, you fucker. Okay, maybe that was a little mean, but still. And now I can't really do much healing in this chapter probably should have come in a little better prepared, now that I think about it. Again, really kinda wish I'd done another take of this. Oh, and here's me not entering his range, so I could very well be wrong about that. He might attack you if you enter his range. Then again, Horus probably did as well. Oh, that was pretty good. Uh, but I just never noticed it, because it's very easy to avoid him. As nervous as I am about being in his range, it really doesn't matter. Oh, and even Harden's getting close to a level up. Very good. Well, we could probably end this now, but I won't because we don't have that many units that can approach Dactyl. And quite frankly, after Samson's performance, I really don't trust him. Alright, well, I guess we'll just finish this up. All right, Edsel, just give me a moment. We're gonna take care of this guy. I'm just gonna pile around him. 
Have I ever mentioned that before, how it's kind of the most hilarious thing, how terrifying it must be to be a Fire Emblem boss? You have to guard the throne, because if you don't, the enemy commander could take it. But then you get to the end, and since you can't move, all these powerful warriors are just surrounding you, wielding weapons, and you can't do a thing about it. You just have to look at them. Just streaming in, ready to destroy you completely. I'm, uh, getting the feeling you're not long for this world, Mr. Dactyl. Getting a pretty good feeling this is the end of you. Good final words. Ungwa. I'll make sure to write that down for the history books. Famous quote from Dactyl. Ung I think that's how it went. Alright, well, this is the last chest. Wing Spear. Very nice, always good to have one of those. I never actually use them because I'm so worried about using them up, and then I just end the game with like a thousand of them. Okay, no, I didn't leave anybody behind, self. You don't have to do that. Alright, well, end of the chapter. That was easy enough. Oh boy, thank you, Gaiden Chapters. Thank you for giving me even more money. I don't even need it. I only ever buy iron weapons. Though that being said, it does have its uses. Money will be useful later on. I'll make sure to have plenty of iron swords then. I mean, I was fully prepared to kill you for it, but I wasn't really that in the mood, so I just stood around. Those were dark days, Marth said, flashing back to the time where basically the entirety of his family was killed and he himself was very nearly murdered by King Jeol. Well, no, we've got a whole lot of chapters after this, but we're getting pretty close. Mm, nope, but you can come along anyway. I mean, look, I don't like you that much, but I do need your ending. That's why I have Samson along, and I don't even like the guy.